Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Grundig GNF 41822 dishwasher. Now it is available in different colours. At the moment we've mainly got it in the stainless steel finish. Uh, but there are various models around this that probably look similar to this that are available in slightly different specifications. But for the purpose of this one I'm showing you the 41822 model. Now really what I want to do today is to show you around the dishwasher and some of the features and benefits that it offers. So I've got it plugged in, let's have a look. So a little bit about the dishwasher itself. It has 13 place settings on this model, so it's quite a good size inside, I will show you that in a bit. Uh, the dimensions on this model are 60 centimeters wide, 60 centimeters deep and 85 centimeters high. So it's fairly standard dimensions for a dishwasher, but I always recommend just have a quick measure, just make sure it goes in before you go and buy one. Uh, if you are new to my channel, then while I think about it, please click the subscribe button uh, just so you can see any of my other videos that pop up. So I'll show you the display to start with. So first of all, to switch it on, you press and hold the on and off button. Now these are uh, basically touch control buttons. Uh, so you will find that they don't physically go in. It's just when you press and keep your finger on it that that's where it's activated. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll have a quick run through the programs. So the first program is Eco 50, and that's really a very good one if you're not too concerned about the time on the program, uh, but you're more concerned about the energy efficiency and the amount of water that it uses. So on this program, although it looks like a long program at 3 hours 15, uh, that will only use around 6 litres of water. Now, if you're comparing it to other dishwashers, then 6 litres for a, a full wash is, is fantastic. Um, so although it takes a little bit longer, um, it's just the way it washes um, so if you're not in a hurry or if you're doing it say overnight or if you're out then I'd definitely recommend using that one the Eco 50 and the next one so program 2 is the auto 40 to 65 degrees and with this one again it's going to take around uh, three and a half hours to start with uh, but what you will find is that it will actually adjust the time depending on what's inside now I know it sounds a little bit odd but this is, as it says here, between 40 to 65 degrees. Um, so what it will do, when you've got everything in there, it will send a certain amount of water through to start with. And what it will do is it will actually determine how dirty everything is, and it will actually adjust the time accordingly. So it can vary from just under two hours to around three and a half hours. Um, and that varies, again, it depends on how dirty everything is. It can go from 10 litres to around 14 and a half litres. So it uses quite a bit more uh, water than the, the first one, the Eco program, but it's nice to have something a little bit quicker. The next one's called the All-in-One Wash. Uh, and with that one, uh, that one again is around three hours. Uh, that's using around 18 litres of water. Uh, and basically what Grundig say is it's the it's suitable a washing program for daily mixed dishes including plastic items uh, while delicate glass items are washed in the upper basket pans and trays can be washed in the lower basket now pretty much that's what hopefully most people do anyway uh, but this is a, a general wash um, at, at around three hours again so the next program is the 70 degree wash this is the intensive program and as you can see not quite as long so it's around two and a half hours but this is washing at the much higher temperature of 70 degrees. Uh, this is an ideal program, so if you're uh, washing things like, if, if you've had say a Sunday roast, and if everything that you're washing is fairly greasy, say pots and pans, then that's an ideal temperature for that. Um, and the next one is the quick wash. So the quick wash 58, and as it says, it washes in 58 minutes. Uh, with this one, it, as I say, you know, it's a lot quicker, just under an hour, only uses 10 litres of water. Uh, this is ideal for uh, like daily washing program, so if you've got things like lightly soiled items, then this is a good program. Uh, it's not really recommended for things like your Sunday roast pots and pans, uh, but this is more of a general wash, and that's washing at 60 degrees. Uh, the next one is the glass care. So, at uh, an hour and 42 minutes. That one uses 13 litres of water. Uh, and that's really, this is really a special program. Uh, it's, it's things like gentle cleaning, 
of delicate glassware. So if you've got some really nice glasses uh, that you wanted to wash, then rather than hand washing them, then it's a lot safer to do it in this dishwasher on this program with the glass care. The next one is the Mini 30. And with this one, this washes at 35 degrees, uh, but it is a half an hour program. It uses around 10 litres of water. Uh, and with this, this is really designed for uh, sort of, I suppose, like a very quick wash. So you, you uh, again, if you've got very heavily soiled pots and pans, then this isn't really the program for that. If you just got something that uh, probably needs just a, a quick wash over, then this is the ideal program for that. And the the next one is the pre-wash. Uh, this is just really a program. So if you have got something that's very heavily soiled, then what you can do is you can put it in here on the pre-wash uh, and that just really gets a lot of the dirt off before you put your main wash on. Uh, the next one to show you is this one, which is the self-care. Uh, this is really like a, a maintenance wash. Uh, it's recommended so that you don't put anything in there. So just put just put the dishwasher dishwasher on on its own. Uh, and with this one, it's uh, about an hour and fifteen minutes. So it's a fairly quick program. It uses around fourteen liters of water. Um, this is really designed so that if you run this program probably once a month or once every couple of months, really depending how much you use it. And also it can depend on the temperatures that you're using. Uh, if you are tending to wash at a lot of lower temperatures or doing a lot of the quick programs then we would normally recommend using the self-care program more often. Uh, what you can find is if you're washing at the lower temperatures quite a lot then sometimes it doesn't clean the machine through like if you're washing at some of the high temperatures. If you are washing or using some of these programs a lot, uh, especially the intensive 70 degree, then I personally would recommend that the self-care program you don't need to do it quite as often. So now I've covered some of the programs then I'll show you some of these different options around here. So what I'll do is I'll go on to the program one and this one is a good option it's called the half load and what you can find sometimes is you might not have enough to do a full wash so by pressing the half load option then that reduces the time a little bit down to 2 hours 47 minutes. Uh, what you'll also find is that this actually acts as the child lock as well. So if I press and hold that for three seconds, then it counts down. And what that means is that little fingers can't come along and change any of the settings. Uh, that can be a useful feature if, uh, if that's something that you need. Uh, but if you press and hold that for three seconds, then that enables you to get going again. Uh, the next one is the Express program. So this is uh, an option where you can use it on quite a few of these programs. So it's, it, the Express option will uh, basically reduce the time on the wash. So it's from over three hours to an hour and 56. And the main advantage is you can actually get the high temperatures on some of these. So you're still at the 50 or uh, even say the 70 degrees but what it will do is it will actually reduce the time of the program. So if you're in a rush, then that could be a good option. And the next option is the steam shine. Um, this is really an, an advantage. If you want things extra dry, uh, it's just a, an extra option to enhance the dry performance of the machine. The time delay is a very useful option. So if you've got things like economy seven, or if you just want it to be on when you're out or during the night, then uh, this is a, a good opportunity to delay the start of the program. I won't go all the way through uh, but what this will do is this will actually go up to 24 hours that you can delay it for. Uh, you'll find the first, I think it's seven hours, actually goes up in half an hour increments. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a, a huge benefit. Um, what, what you'll find is that a lot of people are more than happy with a, a standard time delay of every hour increments. Some dishwashers only do it every three hour increments. So to start off with half an hour increments, uh, personally, I'm not sure it's a good idea because you're having to press the button more, if you want, to, especially if you want to get up to some of the, the higher number of hours. Uh, and then the next option is the start and pause. So when you actually want to start the program, then that's the button you press. On the right hand side here, you have got the progress indicator. So it shows you whereabouts in the wash it is. And also on the left hand side here, you've actually got the, uh, the rinse aid, 
salt um, indicator so that uh, clearly this is a new machine so we've not used it yet uh, but what this is telling us is that we need to put these in I'll show you inside the dishwasher now and as we go inside first of all you've got a really nice easy to grip handle uh, just under the control panel uh, and the first thing you'll we'll notice is that you've got a couple of nice looking LED lights um, it's little things like that that really give a, a good first impression of a dishwasher um, I wish more manufacturers would put lights in here because especially as you get to the back of the dishwasher sometimes it can be difficult to see in there uh, first thing you'll notice on the top basket is it's nice and easy to pull out you've got the handle at the top there uh, quite a few of these uh, can actually fold down so any of the darker colour ones can fold down if they're light colour then they're static and the main advantage of it folding down is that you can actually provide a nice flat area so uh, you have got on both sides here you have got these which can uh, you can take them off if you want to uh, some people don't like to have these on here they're really designed for things like espresso cups or things like bread knives along both of these sides you can just fold them up if you want to so that's the same on both sides so that's a, a nice little feature uh, you will notice that you have got a little tray in the middle here uh, this is a like a cutlery tray and it's something quite a few manufacturers are, have started to do now so Grundig are not on their own in this uh, but it's something that quite a few people like and they're starting to ask for now the main advantage is that you've actually got the ability to put things like your knives, fork, spoons or even uh, even some of the long things like bread knives on here but what you can do is you can actually spread them out uh, and what you'll find is if you if you put them in here and put them in properly then the washing performance and the cleaning performance will be a lot better rather than just chucking them into the cutlery basket at the bottom so that's on there as well uh, it's something I quite like having the, the thinner one in the middle um, often what you'll find and some manufacturers have a full tray going um, really from left to right and the main downside of that is it can limit the height of some of the cups or glasses that you have in the side so having this in the middle is a really a, a very good idea as we go to the bottom again you've got a nice easy grip handle to pull the bottom basket out and you will notice that it is a full stainless steel interior uh, this is something that we like um, and a lot of co customers like uh, the main advantage of having stainless steel is it's a lot more hard wearing than some of the plastic cheaper finishes that some manufacturers have gone to um, and also what you'll find is it's a lot better for things like build up of lime scale or anything like that so um, I'm pleased that Grundig have, have stuck with the stainless steel interior you will notice that you have got the other cutlery basket uh, so you've got the flexibility of having this as well so you've got the option to uh, take these over the top so you can you can have those on and that's again very good if you want to put individual things like knives forks or spoons in here then to do that is always the preferred option uh, I think it is debatable as to how many people use that I know at home to be fair we don't really use that I know we should do um, but it's very tempting just to put everything in here because it's so much quicker doing it that way so you will notice that you've actually got channels in here underneath the cutlery basket and the main advantage is you're not limited to one place that you can put it it can be located here or if you wanted to to move it around and you can just move it over to another section of the dishwasher uh, again you have got some of the fold down racks so what you can do is you can actually fold all of these down to provide a, a nice flat surface at the bottom and again the main advantage is that if you've got big things like casserole dishes or saucepans then you can actually uh, just put them anywhere you like at the bottom so it's a lot easier to do that uh, as we go to the back the dishwasher just take that out as we go to the back you've got the this is the filter so you've got one filter just at the side there and this is the other main filter to take out so what we'd normally recommend is uh, every now and then uh, well whenever you're doing the maintenance wash then at least check 
this as well. You should just really be doing this a bit more often. So just check that there's no sort of food residue or any bits at the bottom. Um, and to put that back in, yeah, you just twist that. Make sure that two arrows are located next to each other to fully lock it in place. You've got the salt here. Uh, just make sure it's proper dishwasher salt that you're using. So to take the lower spray arm off, that's really easy. You just pull that and you can see it's uh, it's nice and easy, just a couple of clips that hold it in place. So that just drops back on there. And the upper spray arm, so with that, that just twists. Slightly different design, um, but it's very easy to get hold of. And then to put that back on, you just locate that and then that's ready to go. So as far as maintenance goes, it's very easy. Uh, the other things at the front here, you've got the rinse aid. So this is really where the rinse aid goes in. And uh, as I keep saying in a lot of my other videos for dishwashers, we do always recommend that you ideally use rinse aid and salt. Uh, I know there are quite a few tablets or the little gel pouches that you can get now that go in here. Um, with some of those, then they do have the rinse aid or salt already in them. Uh, say the 3-in-1 or the 4-in-1. Although they are okay, we still recommend using the rinse aid and salt in there. And what you'll find is if you do use them, especially a good quality manufacturer, then uh, the washing performance that you'll get for, for everything in here should be a lot better than just using the, say, 4-in-1 and no rinse aid and no salt. Now just here around the back of the machine, uh, for some people it's quite useful, for others it's not. So if you're not installing it, then it may not be of use. Uh, but around the back here, you've got standard things like the, the waste connection. So that's quite a good length to make sure the water gets out safely. Uh, you've got the mains down here, so that's already got the plug on there. Uh, the main thing to mention is this cheeky little thing here. And what you've got is, this is called Water Protect Plus. And this is actually, this is actually the cold feed, so this connects onto the cold tap. As with all dishwashers, pretty much they're just cold fill only. Uh, but what you've got is this will actually, so as I say, it's called Water Protect Plus, and this is designed to uh, detect if there are any leaks within the machine. So it's a really good feature. Um, it's something that quite a few manufacturers have done for several years now. Uh, the only thing I'd say is just make sure that if the pipes are actually going through a cupboard, because I do find a lot of people have got the taps the other side of a cupboard, so for installation purposes, just make sure that you can actually get that in. And what I will do, because I've got a tape measure here, and just measure that for you. So that is seven centimeters. So you need to make sure that the hole you've got is at least seven centimeters to make sure that that can go through okay. So if you are thinking of buying one of these dishwashers, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Grundig GNF 41822 dishwasher. Please give us a thumbs up, click subscribe on our YouTube video and leave any comments below. I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video. Uh, if you have got any questions about the dishwasher, then again, leave it in the comments below to uh, let me know if you've got any questions. Or if you've got any comments on it, so if, you're to, if you have got one of the uh, Grundig dishwasher, then let me know what you think, because I'll be honest, we haven't really done much with Grundig over the years. Uh, but it'd be good to get some feedback to let me know what you think about them. Thanks for watching.